Hello my soccer universe, let's look at all the results of the past weekend and see uh, what has changed. I will again put a focus on the top five because I haven't really looked in the other leagues all that much. Um, again, I want to say the leagues that I'm looking at are usually the top 15 leagues of the UEFA ranking and then also the leagues of the teams that play in the Champions League. So that means Serbia, for instance, gets added in. Um, uh, we're gonna start in La Liga and yeah I'm gonna I'm wearing Real Madrid I said uh, I gotta give some love to those jerseys because they are beautiful and I've been wearing a Germany jersey to work I haven't been wearing a Real Madrid uh, jersey to work and I have to be honest I'm not that much you know I don't mind it that much so I think it's a beautiful jersey hope you agree so La Liga we go and we had of course um, the big clash between the two Madrid teams that was the outstanding result we had Valencia winning at Athletic Club Villarreal 5-1 against Betis is also a huge result uh, Granada again get, gets a win again which will be interesting for the table the Sunday results I have to say as um, so and so I see again Espanyol and I, I know I'm probably give Espanyol more credit than they deserve um, that's just because I don't want to say they're my team in Spain, but you know, I, I have some sympathy, sympathy towards them. Uh, and then Sevilla beats Real Sociedad, which means that in the table, Real Madrid defends their first spot. Uh, then Granada, and they will be playing next weekend, so that's the big one. We have also Atletico Madrid, Barcelona uh, uh, next, and uh, see how tight it is there now. Um, Barcelona, Real Sociedad, and Sevilla with 13, and Atletico Club with 12, so it's really tight, and also Villarreal with, Real with 11. So there are eight teams within four points, so that's almost a guarantee that every week there is some change. Uh, another big matchup next weekend is Barcelona uh, at home to Sevilla, so you know. It could well be that we have one and two Real Madrid and Barcelona uh, starting next week, depending on what Atletico Madrid will do. If we look towards the bottom of the table, um, yeah, it's also relative. I mean, we also have uh, nine points. Valencia is kind of where the first drop is, and then gets pretty smoothly down up until, you know, Espanyol, Mallorca, and Leganes at the very bottom. Uh, that, yeah. Leganes is the one team that really looks to be in trouble here. In the Premier League, um, we also had a couple of interesting results. Uh, but, you know, the same old, same old on the top with Liverpool getting a lucky goal. I don't want to say a lucky win. Um, a City also getting a win, which was quite some work, but uh, they got it. Chelsea uh, is back to winning ways again. Um, and yeah, Spurs also. Wolves, Wat Watford was, uh, yeah, was not a good game. Watford really look, look, looks to be a team that will face relegation if they continue their ways. And Leicester uh, dominated Newcastle, and I fear the same for Newcastle. Uh, the game uh, yesterday between United and Arsenal ended 1 1. And from all I heard, I have to say, I only heard so far, it was a dreadful game between two fallen giants. The interesting thing though in the table is that once you look uh, past Liverpool and Manchester City, there's Leicester City um, leading above the rest and I'm actually quite happy to see that Leicester City is doing uh, well, but Arsenal is fourth and everyone's complaining how bad Arsenal is doing. Yes, they might be exciting up front, they seemingly were not yesterday, but to me that's a little bit of a standard that Arsenal is hanging in there that well. Uh, West Ham taught them, so there are a bunch of uh, London clubs, Chelsea are kind of also packed together. And I have to say of those, Chelsea almost looks the best. Who knows? Uh, Manchester United only in 10th spot. Then we have a bunch of uh, teams that make kind of the midfield. England is similarly tied towards the bottom, not on, on the top as Spain. And if you look at the last four, I mean, uh, five, there's Brighton with six, Norwich with six, Aston Villa five, Newcastle five, and Watford two. Yeah, it's the teams that, that we'll expect. I actually really have some hope that Norwich... Um, will not have much trouble but yeah they get a big win and they lose one like crystal palace um this week let's 
Let's move forward to Serie A, uh, where a big clash is coming up. Um, Juventus ball 2 0 in Inter wins 3 1 at Sampdoria, Atalanta. Ah, wins 4 1 as I saw. I think I, I called it 4 0 uh, the other day. So, I mean, the three Champions League fighters all win, and then Napoli also wins at Brescia. So, all Champions League teams win, and they are again in the, we will see in the top four. Roma gets the win at Lecce, Udine Bologna 1 0, Cagliari uh, Verona 1 1, and I said enough about um, Milan and Fiorentina. Uh, Fiorentina, yeah, and Milan, utter disgrace. Uh, Parma Torino was a super uh, entertaining game yesterday. I saw the highlights this morning. Um, many chances, especially for the first half, and it was a perfect 3 2 win. Meaning Parma took the lead, then Torino turned it around, um, and then Parma turned it around to win it. And they scored the winner late. Uh, Jevinho missed the penalty when it was 1 1. Um, so there was lots there. Jovino also missed uh, a couple of other great chances. Torino suffered from an early red card. And so in the table, as I said, the top four uh, remain the same. And it's the same top four, not in order, that we had last season already. Um, Note that on the weekend, uh, I think it's Sunday evening, we have the huge clash in the Juventus. I think there we will really, for the first time, see what Inter is made of. Inter is having a pretty rough program this week. They first have to play at Barcelona, then Juventus at home. Um, and I'm not sure if you can play the full squad in both games. Maybe Conte, that's why he let Sanchez play at Sampdoria already. Uh, Roma is getting also back into it, uh, same as Lazio. Cagliari continues their good start, but I think this was drop points against Verona at home. Um, yeah, then we have a broad midfield, and let's and then we have a many teams with six points: Asolo, Hellas, Brescia, um, a little team from Milan, uh, Lecce, and Genoa, Spal, Sampdoria. Yeah, the Genoese Genoese teams are in trouble, and Milan is playing at Genoa. Uh, that's gonna be a dreadful game, and I'm still gonna watch it. Sometimes I can hit myself for that. In the Bundesliga, it's basically we have it took uh, six rounds and Bayern is top, and it's mostly due to the inability of other teams that could have toppled them from there. Because um, if Leipzig wins at home, they are first. But you know, I almost want to say I rather Bayern than Leipzig, in a way. But nothing, you know. I'm on this whole Red Bull project. I'm a little bit more neutral than most because I I do not like how 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 they made it in Salzburg at all. Where they just eradicated the history of the team they took over. On the other side, they are doing good work. That has to be clearly stated, and this and this is the one thing that people don't realize. And they're actually doing good things. I mean. Leipzig would not have a team and the East and Eastern Germany needs to have a good team. So simply for that reason, they're doing uh, stuff. Is of, of course, it's not the same as if you build a team like Dortmund from the ground up. But you know, it's not a birthright in a way to have a, that, or not a birthright of big clubs that those are the only ones that should be successful. Uh, so Frankfurt got, got, got off to the start start of the weekend. Gladbach gets um, a way win. We, we talk about it. A similar way win for Leverkusen. Schalke Leip, uh, wins at Leipzig was, in my opinion, the big result of the weekend. Bayern has with Paderborn a little bit more trouble than one would expect. And Dortmund keeps dropping points. That is that is uh, the only worrying part. So we'll see they're not far off. Düsseldorf, Freiburg. Freiburg gets a win and Freiburg... It's also in the mix there, and Hertha gets a second win in a row, setting Cologne in a tailspin for nil. And this is uh, boosting quite some in the table. As I said Bayern now ahead of Leipzig, and then Freiburg and Schalke, uh, also with 13 points, Gladbach and Leverkusen, <laughs> Wolfsburg with 12, and even Dortmund with 11. I mean, they're only three points back and they're in eighth spot. Uh, I would also say Frankfurt with nine. So I mean, it's a pretty, pretty broad top half, actually. And the bottom half is, except for Paderborn, also relatively close, close together with Hertha and Werder with seven, and Hoffenheim, Augsburg five, and Hertha 
made six points now. They made one point at Bayern and they made two wins now in a row. It's only in 10th spot. Um, Hoffheim, Augsburg, five, Düsseldorf, Union. Yeah, this is where it already will get iffy in Mainz. Köln and Paderborn will probably fight until till the end. I fear the Paderborn will break off uh, soon and uh, I wish that Köln will stay in, but um, at the moment I don't quite see it. And let's go to Liga for the last, uh, where we had not getting a big win at Lyon. Uh, PSG again, Neymar. I mean, he scores the winner, 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 winner. Uh, you cannot fault him for that. He's showing up for sure. Um, another Angers, Amiens. Yeah, this is the first time that Angers is kind of dropping points uh, since I'm watching them. 1-1, one, one, uh, Monaco Brest also is a 4-1, so Monaco maybe get something going. I saw this little 1-1. One, one. Um, yeah, Strasbourg gets a win, Saint Etienne wins at Nîmes, and Marseille Ren 1-1 one, one. Uh, in the table. PSG now on top. They will face Angers in the next home game, so also top of the table clash. A little bit unexpected, but Nantes is doing really well. That's something I always will like. Lille, Marseille up there, Nice. Also Bordeaux, Rennes, yeah, also Reims, Montpellier. Again, the, the top 10 really close together. Lyon is dropping off. That's a little bit worrisome, has to be said. Monaco, nine, Strasbourg, nine, yeah. Uh, it's not clear. I mean, if you see from 11 to 19, they're all within one point. And only Dijon, five, is, is a drop. So also super close on top, super close on the bottom. Seems to be the way things are going. Um, Two leagues that I want to quickly look at is the Liga Noche in Portugal, where Family Sao continues their run uh, towards the top of the table. They had 19 points, one ahead of Benfica, who just got an, a narrow win. Family Sao won against Belenenges. Um, so that story continues too, and I checked them out. They have been uh, in the early 90s, they were in the first league, then they made the drop down to the fifth, and now they are rising again. So uh, that's a pretty cool story, I have to say. And I actually want to end it here, because what a better way than to end this video on a good story. Let me know what you think about the situation in leagues. Lots of leagues, it seems to be close on top, close on the bottom. Um, Still interesting stuff. It's still very, very, very early. We're starting October today. And that's usually where you start seeing teams separate. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos uh, like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.